All right, we now have Coach Elliott here. Please go ahead with questions. Tony, this is Grace Rayner from The Athletic. When you look, when you look at the sacks, how, how much, I know obviously you guys just got off the field, but how much of those do you think were on the offensive line and, and how many of them do you think were on DJ? No, I know there were a couple situations, Grace, in particular in the uh, the first sack uh, when we were backed up. Uh, once we saw it on the replay, we we needed to step up in the pocket, and that's tough on the on the left tackle when you slide outside the pocket. So there are going to be a couple of those situations, and then some are going to be, you know, on myself from a situational standpoint, you know, trying to be aggressive on some of them third and longs, trying to go see if we can get a conversion. Um, so so that's going to be a combination of, of of the quarterback doing a better job of stepping up in the pocket, you know, guys winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups up front, and then, then myself putting them in a better situation. Tony, uh, <clears throat> Larry Williams here. What do you make of how DJ just handled himself tonight? And were you surprised at maybe how often he seemed rather, I guess, uncomfortable, if that's safe to say? You know, I thought that, that he responded in, in the last, you know, quarter and a half, you know, played and put us in position to, to have a chance to, to score points. And, you know, there were a couple of things that, that, that it wasn't just on DJ. Uh, there were a couple of situations on some third, critical third downs where, you know, we weren't on the same page from a quarterback receiver standpoint. And then that could cause a guy to start a start pressing. So, you know, obviously with his preparation, I know he's locked in. I know he wanted to be successful. Uh, might not have had, you know, the early start, uh, but proud of the way that he responded uh, down the stretch. Tony, with the, with the passing game, did you feel like it was more of missed throws, miscommunication, or receivers not getting open? Just what did you see as kind of issues with it? You know, there, there were there were a couple there were a couple situations where you know we had uh, you know we had some some option routes and some things that they can do a little bit different, and we weren't on the same page there. And, and again, you got to work through those things as you as you go through uh, through the season from a timing and being on the same on the same page. And you know, there were a couple of times from a progression standpoint, we didn't uh, you know we didn't start a progression exactly where we needed to start it. And there were a couple of times I know there was a situation right after that turnover that I put him in a tough spot, uh, looked down at the call sheet and was reading it off the sheet and, and, and saw, it, I saw it, but then I called it the wrong way. So I put him in a tough situation that resulted uh, that resulted in one of the sacks. And so you know, I think it's just, a, it's just a combination of a lot of things, but, but the biggest thing is that in the critical moments, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't make the plays that we needed to make and they made, and it ended up, they ended up making the other play in the critical moment. With Justin, were you surprised he didn't have more of an impact um, in the slide and, and more of an impact on the game? You know, I think it was it was tough, for, you know, all the way around, especially we had seven plays in the first quarter. And, and I think we, we started both drives, you know, inside the 10-yard line. And so, so you know, kudos to the defense, man. They played their butts off and, and, and battled through. Uh, while we had the, the backed up field position. So I think it was just a combination of, of field position early on, and then we were never really able to establish a rhythm. Uh, and then when you're not in rhythm, then you're just trying to figure out, you know, what are the best, uh, you know, play calls that you can get yourself into trying to establish that rhythm. And, 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 and then at the end of the day, once you have that rhythm, then you can start thinking about getting back to your, uh, to your players and getting, uh, getting them certain touches. Hey, Tony, uh, what went into the decision at the end of the game uh, to go forward on that fourth down? You know, that's, that's, I just asked coach what you want to do. And he said, Hey, let's go try let's go try and win the game. And, uh, and so we went for a fourth and five, you know, a manageable situation. Uh, you know, coach will be able to tell you kind of his thought process for me. I'm just asking, Hey, coach, are you going to punt here? Are you going to go for it? And he said, Hey, let's go try and win the game. And that was a thought process that, uh, that he expressed to me. Tony, the quarterback run game was basically non-existent. Can you maybe, uh, share some insight in, in, into why that was? Right, and you know we had a couple of uh, a couple of called runs uh, there. Uh, you know, biggest thing is just we weren't able to establish a rhythm. You know, and, and so we were trying to kind of settle DJ in, give him just some some rhythm throws to be able to get him, you know, get him under control. Um, you know, get him back. You know, kind of feeling, you know, feeling like he's he's got command of the uh, of the game. And so, you know, biggest thing for us was was the run game. We were trying to establish it and you take out the sacks. And you know, we had over three, you know, three plus yards of carry. Uh, or so in that range, but biggest thing is is we, we, when we started to get going, then we would have some critical penalties, or you know we uh, we'd have a we'd have a one on one breakdown or a matchup issue that that uh, resulted in a sack. And so the biggest thing was it's just hard to just establish a an overall rhythm uh, to be able to get to any kind of uh, any kind of run game. Coach, um, on the interception in particular, uh, what did you see there? 
No, biggest thing there is it was a situation where, you know, uh, targeting Ross there, you know, giving him the ability to kind of read, kind of read leverage. And, uh, and if you're going to read leverage and go inside, then you got to make sure you do a good job of, of protecting the quarterback by crossing uh, any kind of inside leverage defender's face. And, and, and didn't we didn't get across his face. I think the quarterback was trusted his receiver, he delivered the ball, uh, and we didn't protect him from a receiver standpoint by crossing that guy's face. Um, so it was just one of those deals where that's one of those critical – uh, plays that I was talking about that that uh, that we didn't execute it at a high enough level, and they ended up making a play. Tony, how how good was this Georgia defense in terms of some of the other elite elite defenses y'all played? You know, how much of it was new? You know, you got to you got to tip your hat uh, to those guys. Um, they 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 played they played hard. Um, you know, I thought they did a couple of things early on, changed up and broke some tendencies, especially in particular on that on that first third and long. Uh, you know, they hadn't been a team that had dropped a ton of uh, drop eight in that situation. So they did a good job there. Um, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be up there with some of the top defenses. Again, they've been uh, top stop in the run for the last two uh, last two seasons. Uh, they got a lot of they got a lot of experience, a lot of depth. And as they continue to play throughout the course of the season, I think their secondary will continue to improve. So it's a it's a good defense. Uh, and biggest thing for us is is we got we got to take away from it that hey, we can play we can play with them if we if we execute at a high level. But if we don't make the critical plays, uh, they're too good of a defense that, that they're going to be able to capitalize on those uh, on those mistakes. Tony, this is Gene in Charleston. What's your mm -hmm. biggest concern going forward as as to what uh, might not be as easily fixable after tonight? Uh, you know, I have to watch the tape to, to be able to honestly answer that. The biggest thing for me right now is is making sure that the guys respond uh, the right way, and taking ownership of, of of the good and the bad, uh, and then come back to work on Monday uh, with a with a mindset of trying to go one oh one uh one and zero on the week, you know, win the day. Uh, that's the biggest challenge for me. You know, I think that as we as we look at the film, the DJ will easily see opportunities to be able to step up in the pocket. There's going to be some situations where he's going to learn where he can throw the ball away, uh, just to uh, just to to get us to the next play, uh, as opposed to trying to extend it sometimes. Uh, so right now, the things look very very correctable. Uh, the biggest thing is our guys fought hard. You know, they played all the way till the end. You know, they scrapped. Uh, they didn't back down. Um, and if you have that, uh, you know, from from uh, from the beginning, then you can build off all the other things schematically. We'll get better on our timing. You know, we'll do a better job as coaches, making sure that they put them, you know, in the best situation possible. But the biggest thing for us is just to go back and, you know, be humble, uh, go back to work, own our mistakes, and attack our mistakes throughout the course of the week and, and figure out a way to go 1-0 next week. Cool. Hey, Tony, hey, this hey, is Tony. Angela Clemson, 24-7. What was kind of the main issue, I guess, in the lack of rhythm between the pass catchers and DJ um, in an offensive line was – letting guys through and there wasn't a lot of time, but it, it did seem like there was, it, it, I guess, a, a lack of rhythm between DJ and the receivers. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll have to look on tape to see exactly, exactly what, exactly what happened. But as you, as you look through it, you know, there were a couple of, a couple of missed assignments, you know, that we need to, that we need to clean up uh, where the quarterback's expecting the guy to be in one place and, and the receivers in another place. So that's some, some things that happened there. And then, you know, trying to, trying to get five guys out on the route to really stress the defense, you know, puts a little more pressure on the offensive line and we got to do a better job of passing off some of the twists um, and not, and making sure that we bump back so that we can, can close off gaps and buy the quarterback a little bit more time. You know, the quarterback's got to do a good job of stepping up in the pocket, you know, uh, uh, and not, and not drifting in the pocket one side or another, but step up in the pocket, trust his progression uh, deliver the ball downfield. So there's going to be some things that, that we'll see that we can get better, uh, but I believe it'll all be fixable. Tony, was Ndada a, a, a bright spot for you guys, and what did you see from, from him tonight? You know, I thought he made some tough catches, some 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 contested plays. Man, he was going across the middle. You know, he was catching balls in traffic, you know, taking some big hits. So it was good to see him, you know, be able to complete a game, go out there and play you know, from start to finish, you know, at a, at a high level. And so it was a, it was a, it was a bright spot for us and we would need him uh, to be at his best uh, down the stretch. You mentioned DJ going through his progressions. What was your evaluation of his ability to go past his first read tonight? You know, and I'll have to look at the, look at the video. Uh, like I said, there were some, there were some situations where we didn't have a receiver in the right spot. What I know about DJ uh, is he's got he's got unbelievable character, man. He's gonna own 
uh, this uh, this game right here. He's going to get better, uh, and the, and the future is still extremely bright for uh, for DJ. So so again, not the outcome that we wanted. Uh, we did play hard, but we didn't play. Uh, clean enough, and that's going to be the challenge on us as coaches and players to go back to work uh, and make sure that we fix the things that are, that are fixable. Tony, what went into um, the decision to hold Lin Jay out for as long as you guys did? You know, you know, Lin Jay, it's been a battle, you know, and I trust CJ's, you know, judgment right there. Uh, he felt like, you know, those other guys, you know, it had a, had a better job. Uh, throughout the course of camp uh, from a total standpoint, but him proud of him and, and, and you know, kind of waiting for his opportunity to get in there. And I thought he brought us a little bit of a spark, made a couple of plays for us. And we're going to need him. I mean, he's played a lot of football for us. Um, it's just a tough situation when you got, you know, some highly talented guys in a competitive room and trying to find enough snaps, uh, snaps for all those guys. Kind of sticking with the running backs, just, just quickly, what did you think of Will Shipley's debut? You know, just just you know, proud of him to to be able to go in there and, and and with the lights the way they were in the game, you know, right out the gate, goes in there and makes a big third down conversion play for us. You know, breaks the tackle. Uh, he didn't. He looked uh, just like I thought he would. That the moment wouldn't be too big for him. So you know, proud of his uh, his debut. And, and there's going to be some opportunities that he's going to learn from his tape. But same thing I said about DJ. What I know about uh, Will Shipley is he's a young man of character that he's going to attack. You know, everything about everything that he does, uh, and he'll get better as well. With the interior, I was just going to ask, with the interior of the offensive line and a new center um, starting a, a true freshman at left guard, was that a concern entering the game? And I guess how did, how did you think that uh, group in the middle performed? You know, you got to watch the film to, to truly evaluate there. Uh, but, you know, I thought that we did have we did have one snap, but then it was another one that was dropped that right, was, was right in the quarterback's hand. So so obviously that's not on the uh, not on the interior. And, man, they're playing uh, – you know, against you know some of the best guys in the country, uh, in what in what Georgia presents in the uh, in the interior of the offensive line, um. So so we'll go and we'll watch the film. Uh, but that's what uh, we decided is going to be our you know our starting group going forward, unless some unless something changes you know down the uh, down the road from a com competition standpoint. But man, hey, to to go in there to play with a new center, to go in there and uh and have a, a new left guard, man, proud of those guys the way they competed. And and again, obviously, you're going to have some some challenges and some opportunities to grow. So we'll get on the film. You know, we'll make sure we identify those and we'll figure out ways to to help these young men get better. Do we have time for one more question? Okay, if there's nothing else for coach, we'll end it here and we'll have DJ uh, Louis Angola lay up next. Thank you, guys. All right, thank y'all. Coach Sweeney is now going in room three.